This show is brought to you by these happy patrons. Hey, hey, you beautiful people. Welcome to the BNPR show, a celebration of stylized rendering. The highlights are Grease Pencil is getting crazy dope. Kristoff rocks it and burns everything. Beer layer system in Eevee? Yup. So let's dive into the show. In the news, we have four Grease Pencil related items. One. Grease Pencil can do image sequence tracing from a series of s images. We're sure that some people will find a very good use of this feature. Two, Grease Pencil has a filter and invert filter function in the dope sheet. Now it is easy to find and fill from the lines. Three, Grease Pencil Tools is an add-on that will become bundled in Blender 2.91 with features like cage deform, rotate canvas, textured brushes, and more. And of course we say, why didn't this arrive sooner? 4. LANPR, or rather line art in Grease Pencil, now can use vertex groups to control the line art effects. Line art also reduces RAM consumption, though how much saving varies from scene to scene. Any amount of memory savings is mostly welcomed. Here are three tutorials by Christoph Didain. As always, the Veroni texture is the hero. You'll see why. The procedural rock. First, let's make a rock material. Here are the key points to construct the material. One, use a soft edge Veronite texture using a smooth F1 Veronite texture. Two, to randomize the texture to look painterly, add a noise texture to the smoothness parameter of the Veronite texture. Three, scale the noise texture to get a wet paint effect. Four, add another noise texture to the scale of the smooth Veroni texture to create a distortion effect. Five, now make another Veroni texture and pipe in the noise and distortion made previously. Then mix both Veroni textures using soft light blend mode. When scaled, this will add variety to the texture. Six, to randomize the rock by position, insert the object info to location into the mapping nodes location input. Seven, for manual shading, Add a linear gradient texture and rotate the dark part to under the rock. Then multiply the shadow into the original texture from the previous step. 8. For the highlight, add a color ramp and use the gradient result from the previous step as a mix factor. 9. To add a small detail color from the detail Veroni, add another color ramp then blend using color blend mode with the output of the original Veroni texture. 10. To add dry paint blotches, Add a musgrave texture and a color ramp, then use the output as a mix factor before the shading info. 11. Then randomize all the paint blotches by location. And 12. Colorize everything. And now we have stylized procedural rocks. Neat! Let's heat things up for the second tutorial with stylized fire. Here are the key points. 1. General shape of the fire is a mix of Veroni texture with a linear gradient. Two, to get hard edges, add a color ramp after the mix. Three, repeat step one and two a few more times with different Veroni scales. Step four is to add transparency while coloring the opaque part. Five, animate the locations of all the mapping nodes to see the fire burn ferociously. Six, for flame distortion, we add a wave texture to the Y mapping and limit it with a linear gradient. Seven, you can change the shape of the fire by changing the first linear gradient into spherical or other shapes. Eight, to control bloom, increase the emission shader to more than one. Also, turn on bloom in the render setting or you'll be pulling your hair. Using this method, you can make a forest fire or a tiny little campfire which needs more wood or it will simply poof out any second. A fire is weak if there's no explosion and smoke. So to make stylized smoke, here are the key steps. One, add an icosphere and subdivide it a few times. Two, add a displacement modifier with negative strength, add a Veroni texture to it. Three, the Veroni texture needs to be bigger and set the distance matrix to distance squared. Four, for more detailed smoke, add another displacement modifier with a smaller scale Veroni texture. Five, for the direction, Set it to object and point it to an empty. The empty is used for animation. 
If you have two displacement modifiers, use two empties. One to animate the small displacement and another to animate the big displacement. Six, for shading, use a frenal and add a color ramp. Seven, to make the smoke fade away, add a transparency and animate the factor. Eight, for smoke, duplicate the mesh a few times to make a smoke trail. Nine, for explosions, scale the smoke mesh. And boom! Just like that, the Veroni texture can be used for chaos as well as tranquility. Powerful is this Veroni. And one more. Supergiant's Hades game special effects breakdown. This isn't as much of a tutorial, but a quick showcase by Supergiant game real-time effects in Hades. You will see Veroni textures in action as well. There's a lot to learn from these procedural materials. Be sure to catch it on Twitter. We can't fit the extreme amount of tutorials into the show like we did last show, so here are some bonus tutorials. One, Grass Shadow Update by Lance Barrel. This simplified the shading by a lot, so be sure to watch it. Two, Different Methods to Make Cell Shaders by Joseph Hansen. This is an article with plenty of images to look at. Three, Making Fur by Epic Night Studios. You can make hair shading using this method as well. Four, how to mix 2D with 3D by Polycosm. Pretty cool to see the different workflows in their animations. The last two by Active Motion Pictures. Number five, ice. Procedural material mixing is a general guide on how to handle procedural materials. Six, and finally, ice particle effects using grease pencil. A short one and a good one. Find any tutorial you like, watch them after the show. Now for them yummy beer updates. First up, Malt has a few more common shading models. For Diffuse, we have Lambert, Oranair, and Burley shading models. For Specular, we have Fong, Blinfong, GGX, Beckman, and Cook Torrance shading models. Speculars now use a roughness parameter instead of shininess. Shininess parameter can go to infinity. Roughness has a range of zero to one. Next, Malt has a Toon Specular and a Ward model for anisotropic shading. For basic color utilities, Malt has RGB to HSV conversion, HSV to RGB conversion, color to grayscale, and alpha blending. We have ambient occlusion and a sample file on how to use it. For blur, we have box, circle, and Gaussian blur. For shadow, Malt has point light, shadow maps, and cube map supports. Shadow map resolution for different light types is also available. One very cool feature is Shadow Object ID. With this, we can isolate self-shadow. Vertex displacement support is also ready, so you can make them wobble faces. Yep, just like that one. And next, we have something quite exciting for you. Lightning Boy Studio will be releasing the second generation of their highly popular Tune Shader next month, Lightning Boy Shader 2.0. It builds from the strong foundations, as shown in their tutorial series. This newer version has been rebuilt to be completely streamlined and powerful. How powerful? The answer is using a feature-centric and layer-based approach similar to Beer. You can easily build any NPR style in Eevee by focusing on the artistic side instead of the mathy side. Some of the new features include, but are not limited to, support for more light sources, much easier masking, and various painterly styles can be added by simply drag and dropping notes. Shut up and take my money! And this is where you can support them. The money raised will help support their animated project, Dinomancers, and 10% of the money will be donated to the Beer Development Fund. We can't wait to get a hold of Lightning Boy Shader 2.0 as it provides a taste of beer. So we'll ping everyone when the fundraising starts. Stay tuned. Now, time to get inspired. Tell your eyeballs to feast on these.
This fox is by at Pippa McFly. It has a nice character design with the emphasis on the ears. The color design is nice as well. Well-planned color values and using the hue shift gradient. There is a continuous analogous relationship for the orange to brown color while emphasizing the face of the character. Overall, a very well done character. Playing with Fire, Bucket List Episode 0 by Bucket Boy. Ain't nobody got enough of the Bucket Boy. Seems like everyone wants to beat him up, which means we'll watch more epic battles. The style is very cool. No more spoilers, you have to watch it on your own. The Unsleeping Idol by Polycosm. In its full one bit of glory, the story tells of a detective accepting a case he should not have. A bit of chill spikes the vibe on this one. Eager to see what will come up next. Redline Ronin and the Seven Deadly Swords, opening one, Resurrection by Freelance Animation. The story goes like this. At the end of the last great age of man, a warlord arose from the ashes of nuclear fire, as terror and death enveloped the earth. Together with his six cyborg generals, the Seven Deadly Swords and their robot army laid waste to the remnants of the old world. The Seven Deadly Swords enslaved all the citizens of their empire. Resistance was met with death. Ten years later, a cunning, resilient, wasteland hunter named Jiggs stumbled into an abandoned laboratory. She activated an advanced robotic prototype. That changed everything. Want more? Well, we have these bonus animations, among other secrets, hidden in the show notes. Please check them out after the show. So that's a wrap for this show. Now for the ribbons on top. The show was brought to you by these awesome people. Please thank them kindly. Before we go, one final question. What else can Veroni Texture do? 